Hello again, Sandy Moss here with another uh, set of curiosities for you to consider. Uh, and what I'd like to talk about now uh, is this business of baleen. Baleen is material that is produced by whales, certain kinds of whales, uh, the so-called baleen whales, or technically known as the mysticeet whales. And of all the whales in the world, and there, uh, there are roughly speaking 80 or 90 species of whales, only 10 or 12 of those species are what we call baleen whales that have baleen in their mouths. Uh, the rest of them have teeth, sometimes as few as just one tooth. Think of the narwhal, for example. Sometimes just two teeth, as happens in some of the beaked whales. Uh, but we're most familiar with porpoises, which are toothed whales that have a good mouthful of teeth. Sperm whales, of course, which have a lot of teeth. And also killer whales. Uh, all of those belong to the toothed whales. So the toothed whales don't have baleen, they have teeth, but these non-toothed whales, or the baleen whales, have plates of baleen. This is one from a fairly large whale. It's probably six feet long, and it's material that's made of keratin, just like our fingernails or like our hair. And in fact, the baleen is arranged so that there are tubules of this hair-like material that pass inside the, between the outer plates of the baleen and are going in this sort of direction. And when the baleen gets worn, and this is quite worn here, but you can see toward the tip how uh, as it wears, it exposes these tubes, these uh, tubes of keratin. And so they form these hair-like edges on the, on the ends of the plates. These plates are together, very tightly packed, hanging from the upper jaws of the whales. Uh, and this is an example of a different whale, but the, there are three, one, two, three, four plates of baleen here. And you can see they're packed very close together. This would be sort of the outer part of the plate toward the side of the jaw, outside the jaw of the animal. And this would be the inner part. And these are the hairs here, which are, are being exposed as this wears away with age. And what this does, uh, in the baleen whales, they have two ranks of these plates. With, there may be 300 plates on each side, and together the hairs exposed on their inner sides present a filter. They present a mat of this hairy material. And what happens is that the whale goes to the water, takes a great big mouthful of water in its mouth, its throat bulges way out, and then it takes its tongue and moves that tongue up toward the roof of the mouth, and that squeezes the water out between these plates. I'm sorry, this way. It's going this way. It squeezes between these plates, and the food for the animal gets impinged on these hairs, on this, on this filter plate that's created. And the whale just wipes that off with its tongue and takes a, a swallow to get all the material that's trapped there, and then takes another big mouthful of water and squeezes that out. That's how they make their life. Doesn't sound very exciting, but it's pretty effective for them. Now, this whale here is, if you looked at it closely, you could see that this whale, which is from a humpback whale, a very active whale that people see on whale watches quite frequently. This is old stuff. This, this material is 100 years old and was taken long before any bans on on uh, whaling were in effect. Uh, but this one has rather coarse hairs. This is a humpback whale, and it eats fish, small fish preferentially, sardine sized fish, sand eels, small herring, and so forth, anchovies. And so it has very coarse hairs. This plate, again very old, is from a right whale, which was commercially exploited during the 19th century. They, the whalers didn't bother much with the the, uh, with the humpback whales for a number of reasons, one of which was the oil they got for them was, was inferior. Another reason was if they killed a, right, a, a humpback whale, it usually sank and they'd have to go through the devil to, to pull it to the surface if they were able to, to get at it. So they generally didn't mess with these. The right whales, however, tended to float when they were killed and so they could handle those. But this right whale has much finer hairs, much longer plates presents a much finer filter. And these things feed on small zooplankton or copepods, which are about the size of a grain of rice. 
So they, they get their food from this much finer filtration. And I mentioned, uh, I have mentioned before about baleen being susceptible to damage by insects. And we can certainly see that here. Uh, if you look closely, you can see this, this piece of baleen has numbers of holes through it. And these holes were created when a tiny moth of a type that likes to eat baleen, sort of like a closed moth eating wool, you know, uh, they settle on here when the baleen is fresh after it's been cut out of a whale's mouth. Uh, and then they lay eggs on it and the eggs hatch into larvae, which burrow through the substance of the baleen and ultimately the larvae emerge and fly away as, as uh, adult insects. And you can see this one, this piece is, is literally riddled with, with insect holes and insect damage here. Baleen was very important in the, in the 19th century as an economic uh, or as a source of income for whalers. And this baleen was used uh, for supporting corsets and shirt stays. It was even plain to make curly cues to stuff furniture with or stuff upholstery with. Uh, it was uh, used in a number of ways. That the Eskimos did something interesting with this. They, they would cut strips of baleen from the bowhead whales that are up in the northern part of the, the Bering Straits. Uh, they would cut strips of this stuff and, and heat it. And baleen, like plastic or like Keratin can be molded. If you heat it, you can bend it, you can shape it. What they did was to, was to bend it into a sort of a U. They'd sharpen the two ends, they'd bend it around, and then they'd put it out in the cold in a piece of meat, say a piece of walrus blubber. And they would let it freeze solid in this folded fashion. And the idea was that one of their animals they they uh, went to get for fur and so forth was the wolf, the, the gray wolf. Uh, and they would leave this outside for the wolves and the idea was the wolf would eat a chunk of, uh, of blubber that had a folded piece of baleen inside it. And then when it swallowed it down into its stomach, its body heat would bring it up to temperature. The baleen would snap back into position and these two prongs would stick out and kill the wolf. For, jabbing inside its stomach. You know, that's one of the bizarre uses of, of baleen. But baleen was also used by Eskimos and other peoples to make, to make boxes out of. This is an example of a baleen box. It's like a shaker box. It's got a lid. It's got a wooden bottom. But the sides are a strip of baleen from a right whale, or in this case a bowhead whale, that had been heated and then bent around in a, in a over round a form to make this oval box. And the ends were uh, fastened by tacks. Here are like little tongues that come out, just like a, a wooden box that the Shaker people used to make a lot of. So this is a baleen box. And, and true to form, you can see that it's got insect damage on it. You can see where these, these insects, which uh, grow up in the baleen and then uh, pupate and then uh, turn it to the adult stages, uh, sort of ate their way out. So once again, we, we think of that as good uh, damage because it may look unsightly, but it tells you that that's, that's real baleen.